you get to see in this beautiful historic building as well as the incredible art that's inside. People love coming here. I went to art school, came out of art school a tapestry weaver back in the late 70s. Came here to work in the country and make tapestries. In those days, I made them for big corporations like Scott Paper. I was living on a farm that burnt down and I had to reinvent myself after that because I lost everything. I walked into a gallery that was showing my work and the director had quit and they said, you're in the art world, you maybe you know somebody that wants this job. So I got the job, I ran his gallery for four years and then my retired partner, Sadie Somerville, asked me to go into business. So I went into partnership with her. When I went to get a bank loan, <laughs> I went to four banks in Wilmington who basically left us out being like women art galleries. Ha, huh. we had no track record. I'm like, yeah, I'm a tapestry weaver. You know, that meant nothing. <laughs> so they, uh, they all turned us down, but we did it anyway. I was in Delaware which actually had a lot of advantages because it's a corporate center of America. But still, nobody thought of an art gallery in Delaware. I wanted a national profile. The fact that we only represent mostly established contemporary artists, it gives us the opportunity to kind of expand their career base a little bit more and place their work in prestigious collections. And that is something unique to this area for sure. Some of our levels of expertise is the Wyeth family, a family of American artists that began with N.C. Wyeth, who was the patriarch. He had five children, and his vision was they were all gonna be artists. And out of those five, four became very famous artists on their own. The last one was Andrew, and Andrew Wyeth paintings are all over the world with exhibitions all over the world. Andrew's son is Jamie, who has carried on the legacy. This is a, a work by Jamie Wyatt of Warhol. It's a posthumous painting. Jamie was really good friends with Warhol back in the 70s. And in this particular work, he was kind of revisiting Andy. And it's his glasses, it's his vision, and his hands, and then his dog. Really important, significant Warhol elements. <laughs> Scenario by Jamie was such a force in the ballet world for forever, and still is. Yeah. This is an original from that time period yeah. where Nuriyev was really posing for. I've always been excited about the idea of, particularly my contemporary artists, getting into museums because it helps give them curatorial credibility. It helps museums expand their directions. We have a lot of artists that went through the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts. Over the years, that has been a really good connection for them and us. Francis DeFranzo went there. He does a lot of work about transportation, but the concept of the transportation isn't the physical train itself or the car itself. It's more about where that was before, where it's going now, and a much more esoteric concept about life and how it moves. Bo Bartlett is highly recognized, collected, and he's an incredibly talented and introspective communicative artist. I also have enjoyed working with Bob Jackson, who is a fascinating artist because he works in Trompe L'oeil. His work is in many museums, including the local ones here. Sarah McRae Morton, who is a younger artist from the Academy, and her work is wonderfully allegorical. They have to have an individual vision of what they're doing. And I don't want it to look like anybody else. I love these trees out there. I don't just go out and paint anything. It has to speak to me. So it's about feeling. It's how you feel when you see something. And, and that's, it really is, I'm painting what I feel when I go out there. You know, that's a start of one I'll get to work on. Mary Page Evans is from Delaware, and she was inspired a lot by Cezanne and a lot of the French artists from the Impressionist period. She spent a lot of time in France going back and forth, painting in Giverny. 
I'd seen a show of Monet's at the museum of, of the Met in New York, and I thought, I've got to go paint in those gardens. And they gave me the key to the garden so I could stay there as long as I wanted. It was fabulous. Mary Page was friends with Joan Mitchell, also Grace Hardigan, very good friends with her, and even Elaine de Kooning, some of the top recognized artists in the country. She had a big retrospective at the Dell Art Museum some years ago. There's books on her. Her work is energetic, emotional, beautiful, and there's two in the White House right now. Mary Page's husband is an ex-congressman from Delaware. She has known the Bidens for a very long time. I always love this one. I think that sometimes being women, we care a lot about the relationships that we hold, and I think that really speaks true to the 40 years that Vicky's been in business, that clients and artists have had such long-standing relationships, and I think there's a real empowerment to that. In history, there were some really amazing women that started galleries in America. Although it was not a women's game, and I had to earn my chops, it didn't just happen. We had to establish that, that we could be here, and people would find us.